I've had a number of requests to cover this topic, and I didn't realize that Dr. Bickman actually attended my university. At the time that Dr. Bickman was finishing his PhD, I was getting started on my undergraduate degree at the same institution. So that's pretty neat, kind of a side note. So he's gained some popularity because he discusses ketones and insulin and their effect on metabolism based on the research that his lab performs. So let's take a listen. Break down kind of what I know you talked about this and you have a book coming out in, in July later this summer that's going to expand more on this. But how is insulin slowing or affecting metabolic rate in this way? Yeah, so there are likely multiple mechanisms. But the one that we have pointed a finger at from my lab with a paper last year looking at insulin and a follow-up paper this year looking at ketones it's that uh, there's a change in the fat cell mitochondria and specifically insulin is slowing down the rate at which the mitochondria are working in a fat cell essentially priming that fat pump to store energy rather than use it so in the first bit he discusses two studies that show some interesting effects of insulin and ketones i've actually done a full deep dive into both of these studies explaining the data and showing graphics on what's going on which I'll link for you. But let's begin with his point on insulin. He mentions that insulin slows the metabolic rate within fat cells by reducing mitochondrial rate of function. Now, his study does show that, but the measures used in these studies need to be bolstered by further measures because the evidence presented just wasn't sufficient to jump to any major conclusions. Still, two things did happen. One, the animals in the study did gain more fat when they were exposed to insulin. And secondly, those fat cells tested had reduced levels of two important mitochondrial proteins that are critical for increasing metabolism. We'll return to those in a minute. So based on the data, insulin would be implicated in reducing fat metabolism. Let's hear his second point. And in contrast, if insulin is low and arguably ketones elevated, that is stimulating the metabolic rate. So it's pushing this fat cell to shift its characteristic of wanting to store energy to actually using it, not just using it, but wasting it. It's burning through fat uh, and even glucose just for the sake of producing heat, which is chemically speaking, an evidence of an inefficiency. But of course in our um, calorie rich environment, what we would call an inefficiency ends up being a huge blessing because it's helping the body uh, have another outlet for all the energy that it's taking in. In this section, he mentions ketones being beneficial for increasing metabolism, again based on data from one of his studies. He's right. The study data does show an increase in metabolism from the exposure of fat cells to ketones. The fat cells take on a different characteristic, switching from a more inert, less metabolically active white cell to a more active, metabolically stimulated brown cell. This process is called beijing. So how do ketones do that? Well, they don't increase the total amount of ATP or cellular energy in the cells, but they reduce the efficiency of mitochondria. And the side effect of that inefficiency is heat production instead of cellular energy production. So the less ATP the mitochondria generates, the more substrate, which is fat and sugar, it needs to generate more ATP, making it less efficient. But through that inefficiency, it burns through more fat. Again though, how does it do that? Well, through the same proteins mentioned before. One of them is an inefficiency protein, in a manner of speaking. So the more of it present in the cells, the less efficient the mitochondria, and therefore the more fat is burned. Okay, so let's look at point number three. Yeah, yeah, it, absolutely. Yeah, my hope is that this idea of, of acknowledging the evidence that hormones, insulin being among the top, if not the top, in controlling metabolic rate, that this introduces a bit more of a nuance where there are these maybe two camps, although I would argue the calorie in, calorie out camp is far more dogmatic and refuses to acknowledge the other, but then the other one being that it's just about insulin, I, I argue really that it's, much, it's just more nuanced than that. Certainly energy intake matters, energy output matters. Hormones just tell the body what to do with energy, including whether to store it or to burn it or to just, well, waste it. I really love this point about hormones and calories working synergistically in terms of our understanding of fat loss. 
Hormones tell our cells what to do with calories, again, simplistically speaking. And while insulin is a huge hormone, it isn't the only one that plays a role. I have plenty of content getting into the nitty gritty of that as well. So I really appreciate the input about hormones because it is true. And to look at the body as purely a physics problem of energy in versus out really leaves out a lot of the nuance that we need to understand to create sustainable fat loss, even if that physics stands true. If you're interested in learning about those two proteins I mentioned, as well as look at things from a far more detailed perspective, check out the attached content, which will explain the science with far more depth. Be prepared for nerdum, though. So you've been warned. Speak to you then. Bye.